Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel Melanade Beauty. I'm so excited to share this video with you guys because this video is the part one to a very epic room transformation. I recently took on the challenge to <laughs> I recently took on the challenge to create a warm and inviting guest bedroom for my mother-in-law. Now I wanted to break up this video into a two-part series because there's just so much content that I want to share with you all. In part one of this video, I'll be taking you with me as I plan and prep this space, create affordable DIYs and upcycles, and of course, my thrifting shopping sprees. And anything that I did not include in this video will be included in part two, such as the big reveal. So please stay tuned for that. But for now, let's check out the space that I'll be working in. It's a small bedroom, approximately 132 square feet. The bedroom used to belong to my mother-in-law's grandson for when he comes to visit, but now she wants to transition the space into a warm and welcoming guest bedroom with a neutralized yet mature design for all visitors. The walls are beige and the framework is a soft lavender color, but fortunately there are great looking hardwood floors, which is always a plus. I like to keep this makeover as budget friendly as possible, so I have a few DIY projects in mind, but first I'm going to create a mood board for instance inspiration. As always, I like to use Pinterest to collect images for design inspo and to help piece together my ideas for a space. I like to lean towards a mid-century modern design with vintage accents and a touch of coastal elements. I like the idea of mixing dark walnut browns with light ash wood tones. We also would like to incorporate a desk for a small workspace area, neutral colors but leaning towards a more masculine feel, and of course white walls to open up the space. I'm totally obsessed with the idea of adding a vintage rug with bold red prints paired with brass accents for almost an eclectic feel. For example, I love this design with the vintage rug and those mud cloth print pillows paired with a warm walnut color. And I did go ahead and create a quick mock-up design of my own for where I want to lead this design into. First thing I want to do is get rid of this very clunky bed frame and opt for something more minimal like this metal frame. Luckily, we found this metal twin bed frame on Facebook Marketplace for free. It was actually $66 retail, so that was a good steal. But first things first, we have to paint those walls a fresh coat of white. So I'm picking up a gallon of paint from my local Habitat Humanity Restore. They sell paint that's a little bit more affordable than Lowe's. And although it looks like I'm putting in so much hard work into these walls, Daniel actually painted majority of it. And I just came back and did a few touch ups. The bedroom already had an existing dresser that was in excellent condition. However, it needed a bit of an update to fit well with the new room design. But for this makeover, I'm going to be keeping it simple by only painting the frame of the dresser, leaving the drawers in its beautiful wooden finish. I got this idea from Pinterest when I scrolled and saw this beautiful, stunning dresser. I think this design would look really great for the mid-century feel. To prep the dresser, I'm going to first start by removing this extra wooden frame at the bottom of the dresser. This makes it a little bit too old for the style we're going for and by removing it we are going to actually make it a bit more modernized. Luckily this piece was very easily to remove because I just had to unscrew a few screws. Usually I would have to pry it off with a Phillips screwdriver or something of such. Removing this piece instantly elevates this dresser into a more modern, chic look. 
So now I have it outside ready for paint. I'm gonna be using my spray gun to paint this dresser, but first I'm going to give it a little scuffing with a sanding sponge, just so my paint can adhere well to the surface. I don't feel the need to prime this piece because I will be using a dark paint and I shouldn't see any type of wood tannings to peek through. So really, you just have to give this a good scuff and just remove some of that shiny finish that's on the dresser. And for the frame of the dresser, I'm going to be painting it in the color Slate. It is almost a very deep charcoal gray color. I would have preferred black, but I'm actually glad that I chose this color. And here I am using my spray gun. It is a cheap spray gun from Amazon. I can link it below for you guys if you're interested. I'm spraying thin light coats to prevent any buildup and drip marks. This particular day was dry and a little bit cold, so it did tend to dry pretty fast. I was able to put three full coats of paint on this dresser in one day. Unfortunately, my battery did die and I wasn't able to get the full makeover process, but here is the finished look of the dresser once it has been all painted. And to seal off the dresser, I used a clear matte coat of Rust-Oleum spray paint. However, I recommend using polycrylic for a more smooth finish look. But overall, I really love how this dresser turned out. That dark matte slate color against the semi-glossy, rich, warm wooden drawers looks so good. So there's a liquidation warehouse sale that goes on every few months in my area that people just go crazy for and mostly because they sell a lot of great store products that are brand new including Target furniture and stuff and I always make it there right on time as soon as the doors open and this particular time I saw this chair from Target that I definitely wanted for the room. It's absolutely way too chaotic in there to film, but I'll be showing you a haul of everything that I got a little later. I also went to Goodwill to look for a few pieces that I could possibly use, and I stumbled across a vintage rug that at first I was just very skeptical about. I was like, I had to post it on Instagram and see what you guys thought. But by the time I left and went back, it was already gone and I just feel like that would have been perfect. So this particular day I dedicated to thrifting and just checking out all my local thrift stores and Goodwills to see if I could find any type of decor pieces or furniture, inspiration for the space before I go out and buy stuff from like, you know, bigger expensive stores. I'm never lucky enough to find really great art pieces at a Goodwill for room makeovers that I'm working on, but I was able to get some really nice picture print sets at the warehouse sale that you'll be seeing later. Now I did come across this like little mini aged piece clay pot that looks like it was um, purposely painted to look a little rugged but still very cute. I actually walked around with it for a bit, but I ended up putting it back because I have plenty of vases to DIY like that at home. And here are some of the furniture pieces. Nothing really stood out to me that I wanted to take 
home except for one piece that I found and I am so excited to show you right after this thrift haul. So I'm gonna start with the little stuff and then I'll work up to the bigger items. So first I found this very cute throw blanket that's striped and I think it would add that perfect touch of coastal that I wanna incorporate in the design. I also got this little wicker plant hanging basket. So cute. And uh, what else? That was only $4. Mind you, this sale, the Sunday sale, is half off of everything. It's from Friday to Sunday. So I went back on Sunday and I got a lot of this stuff half off. So whatever price you see, I got half of that on sale. So really good stuff. This These Target lamps that are about, I think they're $10, I got them for five each. And I also got this twin flannel set something minimal and cozy, especially it's hard finding um, twin bed sets out there that aren't made for toddlers. Now I have stored all of the other larger pieces in Daniel's work van, including this beautiful cane webbing chair that I got for $60. I believe it's originally $300 at Target, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I love this chair. I think it's going to be the perfect accent piece in the corner or maybe sitting at the desk. I also found this lamp. This was actually found in the trash, but um, <laughs> um, I did get this brass floor lamp for only $20 at the warehouse sale. Like I said, I want to add that brass and, you know, gold detail in the room, as well as this mid-century style side table um, this also was found in the trash. <laughs> I've been just trash picking and, you know, lucking up on some good stuff. Now here are the picture frames with the beautiful fabric um, print design inside. They're from Target. They are originally $75. I paid, um, I think $17 for both of them. Um, so yeah, I paid half of that. And I'm just so glad I found these. Nobody was trying to get them. I'm really surprised. Um, and here is a little bit of more stuff that I just found, like this Studio McGee wall art frame. That was for 10, which I got for five. And then this rust colored throw blanket. So yeah, I found some really good stuff and I just cannot wait to put all of this stuff together and show you all the final reveal that will be in part two. So make sure you turn on that notification bell so you won't miss that video. Now let's get started with this amazing thrift flip. And here is that piece that I saw that was in Goodwill for $20. I wasn't able to get a footage of it, but here it is um, standing up. And automatically I thought, oh, put legs on it. It's gonna look so good with legs on it. That very mid-century style, like a bench at the foot of the bed or a little TV stand. So I ended up ordering these legs from Amazon and they were very inexpensive, but really good quality. I'll leave them linked below. I am so pleased that the legs are the exact tone wood as the stand. Like, it matches so well. And so I'm gonna add these to the foot of this stand and see what I come up with. This may look like the most simplest, easiest upcycle, which it is, but it turned out so amazing. I love this piece. Like I am just obsessed with it. It's perfect for the design, the space. It could go anywhere. I just can't wait to style it. I cannot wait to style it. <laughs> Thank you. 
You guys are getting so many great DIYs in this video. It's not even funny. I love this headboard design and I'm gonna recreate it using pool noodles. I've seen a few people do it on YouTube and I thought I'd go ahead and tackle it myself. So I am here at Walmart picking up pool noodles for a DIY headboard, which I never thought I would say in my life. These are the skinny ones. Um, I could have got these, they were cheaper. However, for the look I wanted, I wanted a thicker noodle. So I went with the thicker one. Usually I'd get my fabric from Joann's or online, but since I was in Walmart, I went in and checked it out. I was looking for that same leather material, but of course faux because that would be too expensive. Um, I couldn't really find any in the tone color I wanted except this, but I still really wasn't sold on the pattern that it had um, and it didn't have enough on the roll anyway. So I kept looking and looking. I saw a few more options that I tried to compare, but um, just couldn't find the right one until, not this, I almost used this, but I almost used this but I didn't. But I did find this faux leather taupe color with enough fabric on the roll to work with. So I took a guess and chose three yards of fabric to use for a twin size headboard. I would have preferred a richer warm tone color for the headboard, but this will have to do. And here I came to Lowe's to pick up a piece of backing for the headboard. Um, I almost walked away spending almost $20 for a piece of cheap plywood, but I ended up finding a random scrap piece. I went to go try to get it cut and the man was just like, you can take it. It's free. I don't even think it's part of our inventory. I think it was like the top piece to a pallet box or something. So free, free is always good for me. I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I want this design to be, whether I want my noodles to be vertical or horizontal. I ended up going with horizontal because the twin bed is small and horizontal will give the more illusion of a wider, bigger bed. I'm lining up the pool noodles with the piece of wood and I'm just marking where I'll need to cut. You're gonna learn from my mistakes with this if this is gonna be your first time doing it, but Measuring is so key to doing this, especially because I'm just freehanding these cuts with a bread knife. Just wanna take your time cutting each piece, making sure that they're lined up evenly and you do a clean, even cut. Now this part was a bit more trickier because I have to slice these directly in half, making sure that they are even all the way down. It probably would have been easier using an electric knife, but I did not have one, so a bread knife it is. So I'm just gonna cut all of these directly in half, that way I'll have double the amount of noodles for when I begin to create my panels. Now that I have my pieces cut, I am ready to glue them to the board. I'll be using the Gorilla Glue Spray Adhesive Heavy Duty. This bonds well with wood, metal, fabric, foam, plastic, so I thought this would be the perfect adhesive for this project. So I'll be spraying a generous amount to the first piece of foam, and then I'm going to press firmly until it bonds to the wood. It will take a few minutes for it to adhere, but once it does, it is stuck on there pretty well. Now I'm going to flip up the board and turn it around so I can staple the fabric for where it is going to begin. Mm -hmm. 
Now that this material is secure on the back, I can now pull and tug on it as much as I need to for a nice tight look. And to secure our first noodle, I'm going to flip the material back over and begin stapling right underneath of it. I'm almost pressing firmly upward so I can really get the staple tucked inside as much as possible so you won't be able to see them. Now I'm going to repeat the process and go ahead and put my second noodle down. I tried to apply this while the board was sitting up, but it was just impossible. You have to really apply pressure, so I put it back down flat. And now I have Daniel here to help me. He'll hold it nice and taut as I staple. So that is the key here to have your noodles press very firmly against each other or else you will see those staples. I'm also allowing him to pull on the fabric as much as possible while I go ahead add the glue and then press the foam very firmly up against it and i'm just repeating that process over and over now it did come to a point where i guess we got a little lazy and slacked because one of the noodles just did not roll out fab the fabric smoothly and there was a lot of wrinkles on one of the noodles and we just couldn't smooth it out once the staples were down so we kind of had a work with what we had and just try the best but i really recommend taking your time on each piece work with a buddy and you know make sure everything is smoothed out nice and neatly i am going to be leaving a gap at the end of this headboard that way it can fit nicely behind the bed frame all my noodles are secured and i flip it over to realize that my staples were a bit too long but that is okay because I'll be covering the back with another piece of material. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess fabric. And here is the finished results. Now, I think it turned out pretty good. Those wrinkles at the bottom will be covered once it's behind the bed frame. And as far as this noodle goes, we're just gonna have to leave it as is. I tried working with it as much as possible, trying to tuck that material in to give it more tightness, but um, it's just gonna have to do. So definitely learn from my mistakes, take your time and really smooth out your fabric as you go. But I think it's gonna look really good once the room is together. All right, and for a quick update, the walls and the baseboards are fresh and white. Now all we have to do is add some nice long curtains. The dresser turned out amazing. We're gonna move the bed probably over to this wall and add some nightstands, lots of artwork, and um, possibly nice throw rug. Well, that brings us to the end of part one. That was such an amazing DIY journey from the antique dresser makeover to the easy mid-century upcycle and of course tackling that pool noodle headboard. I cannot wait to add all of these elements to the part two where I'll be adding all of the finishing touches for the final reveal. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss this part two video. So remember to turn on that notification bell so you'll receive a notification every time I upload so you won't miss any of the fun. Now until next time, bye!